If you were a clean energy stock investor last week, you had probably one of the best weeks you have ever experienced throughout 2022. As you can see, Plug Power was up 27% in one day, Bloom Energy up almost 22% at one point, and even a very highly overlooked stock up over 10% in Nikola Motors. So what exactly caused this massive move in the stocks? Well, the massive clean energy plan laid out by Congress and the Senate for the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. This is a pretty big deal, guys, because this is going to be the biggest spending we have ever seen on clean energy, which includes $370 billion for stocks in the manufacturing space, production space, and green hydrogen space. And as you all know, the majority of my portfolio revolves around exactly these kinds of stocks. So in this video, I want to give you guys a very good breakdown of what this bill includes and how this could actually affect some of our stocks in our portfolio, because you all know that a big portion of my bet is on green hydrogen and EVs. So that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give you guys a quick understanding of what exactly this bill is and why has it taken so long for it to actually pass. And instead of me doing the talking, I'm actually going to let one of the economists explain this much better than I can before we go ahead and analyze the individual components of the clean energy bill. It has been a big week for President Biden as he nears key legislation on bolstering the semiconductor industry and an updated version of his Build Back Better plan. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman for his calls of the week. Bidenomics, Democrats kind of returned back from the dead, although you could argue that the GDP, GDP print that came out yesterday kind of dampened the party, right? Sure, uh, but I, I'm not sure that's going to that's going to hurt Biden or the Democrats very much. We we talked about this yesterday. Americans don't think of GDP the way they think about the price of gas or the price of food or their job security. So, uh, you know, the labor market still remains strong and gas prices are coming down. So that's good for Biden. You know, we've been basically ripping on Biden for months because everything's kind of been going against him. And suddenly, out of the blue, I didn't see this coming. I don't think very many people did see this coming. Uh, a really good week for Democrats uh, and for President Biden as well. First, the CHIPS Act, which you mentioned, Congress has now passed that. Biden is going to sign it. It could be today or over the weekend. Uh, and then this total surprise, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which includes uh, some of the green energy provisions from Biden's Build Back Better legislation last year, but none of the social welfare uh, items that Biden wanted in there. This actually this is only going to get support from Democrats, and it's not 100 percent sure it's going to pass yet. But this is actually what you could describe as a fairly centrist uh, bill, because in addition to uh, the green energy incentives, which would be the most Congress has ever done to uh, to push green energy, uh, the bill would say uh, the executive branch needs to speed up approval of natural gas pipelines and other types of fossil fuel infrastructure, and also clarify and speed up uh, permitting for oil and gas um, drilling leases. So um, there's something in there for the fossil fuel industry, which is the energy we have today. And there's a lot in there for uh, solar, wind, and other types of renewables, which is the energy of tomorrow. If it passes, um, pretty good, uh, considering that it looked like Democrats weren't going to get much of anything done just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, all the politics and BS aside, I can understand a lot of the arguments from people who are against this bill, who might think that this can just add to inflation and make the fossil fuel industry completely dead. Well, the reality is we're not going to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels anytime soon. The more important problem is that we need to integrate renewable technologies as fast as possible. And the reality is that the current industry participants are simply too lazy to actually invest and take on the big hits that clean energy technologies provide. And although the cost curve is being written down, we still need policy support to really make this integrated into the current ecosystem as fast as possible, because we all know the time is most definitely running out. As for what exactly is included in this bill, which could be passed within the next six months or so, well, primarily we have clean energy tax credits. And the reason why stocks like Plug Power, Nikola, and Bloom Energy were up so much last week is primarily because of the fact that there is a major tax credit for clean hydrogen or green hydrogen. And the reason why that is a big deal is because by that metric, 
green hydrogen will become simply much cheaper than any other form of hydrogen. That includes gray hydrogen, which is made from methane and natural gas, and blue hydrogen. Guys, this is a pretty big deal, and this is why hydrogen stocks could benefit massively, and I mean massively, if this bill gets passed. This would make hydrogen cheaper than natural gas made hydrogen. And that is going to be a big deal, especially on the companies that are investing in green hydrogen. Plug Power already has multiple factories that are dedicated to making electrolyzers that allow companies to make that green hydrogen, whereas obviously Nikola already has an ecosystem in place and is working with different stakeholders to map out a green hydrogen fueling strategy for their trucks. And as a result, all the capex that these companies have had to endure over the past two years are going to pay big dividends if this bill gets passed because there's going to be ever-growing demand from the ecosystem and the economy for green hydrogen fuel, and especially if Nikola can get their fuel cell trucks out on the road by next year. Following that, a big portion of this bill is going to be around $60 billion for production tax credits for companies that build the ecosystem and the capital expenditure for clean energy manufacturing. This is a pretty big deal because a lot of companies on the public markets right now are struggling with their cash burn and spend because of the fact that bringing down the cost curve for the end user is very capital intensive for companies that unfortunately right now are just not profitable because of the state of the market. And as Plug Power and Bloom Energy and potentially even Nikola in six, seven years time approach that profitability metric, this will play a big, big role. And this should accelerate the growth curve for revenue at least for all the companies I just mentioned. Following that, we also have a lot of support for renewables like offshore wind, which again will drive down the cost of green hydrogen and create a bigger market for the energy storage industry in the hydrogen space. And apart from that, we also have some big fees for methane emitters, which again should help suppress some of the investments in natural gas forms of making hydrogen, which will automatically make green hydrogen much more competitive in a very competitive market. But I'm sure the question you guys are asking is, when will this bill actually get passed? And how will that affect all the stocks I'm talking about? Well, all I can say is if the valuations stay the same for all these clean energy stocks in the market, then if this bill actually gets passed within the next six months, these stocks will go up very significantly. And the reaction will be a lot bigger than what we already saw last week. But unfortunately, there are some roadblocks that we need to consider. Right now, obviously, we have the summer recess coming up for the Senate, which means that if this bill doesn't actually get passed before, I think, August 5th, we're not going to have any luck getting it passed in the summer, and we're going to have to push it all the way back into the fall. And as a result, we still have to wait on what the Senate says. And obviously, we also have to get past the House moderates, which could also slip this vote. But the good thing is that the worst case scenario is this bill getting passed in the fall, which in my opinion is not a bad thing because historically the fall has provided the best opportunities for small caps as we head into the end of the year because of portfolio rebalancing purposes and because a lot of companies tend to report their best earnings reports during the fall and Q3 and Q4. But as usual, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this bill and whether or not this will get passed and what stocks you guys are buying to take advantage of the clean energy revolution.